Welcome to our tutorial about punching in and out. This is a very handy feature which lets you replace a section of a take while hearing your previous take. In this tutorial we'll be learning how to punch in and out of an audio track. Some caveats. If there are instrument reverb trails in the part you want to redo, it's a better idea to do the second take on another track and then fade an in and out of your first take. Otherwise you could end up with a disjointed sound. This doesn't mean you can't do really tight punching in and out, it's just that you'd need to set your locators very precisely, right down to the sample level possibly. And even so, each take might have a different rhythm or something that the punch in and out locations don't catch. If you are going to punch in and out really tight, be prepared to do some possible sample editing or warping to repair any disconnect. When you punch in and out, Cubase starts and stops recording where you set your left and right markers. Let's do that first. Let's first find a good place to break. There's a break in my phrase here. It's a good place for punching in and out because I've just got a few notes to redo on this track and I don't need to fade it in or out of the take that comes before and after. Let's take it out to about here. Okay, I've just set the locators around the phrase I'll be punching in and out. And I've given myself a little room on the end for some variation in my playing. On the transport panel, Cubase provides some very easy tools for activating and deactivating the punch in function very quickly. Let's go take a look at these. These are the punch in buttons right here. If you don't see the punch in and out buttons on the transport panel, just right click and select locators. Here's the left punch in button. It's white when active. And there's the punch out button. That's for the right locator. It's also white when enabled. Now position the cursor before the punch in location, giving yourself enough room so that you can match the rhythm and feel of the take. Instead of pressing record, just press play. As soon as the cursor reaches the punch in point, Cubase will automatically start recording. It'll stop recording when it reaches the punch out point, but it'll still keep playing. Let's try it out. And press stop when you're done. Notice how the Cubase playback dropped out when we were recording. That's because my monitor button was disabled. Here's my punched in section overlapping my previous take since we're in normal record mode. If I was in replace record mode, the punch in would have replaced the previous version. I wouldn't see an overlap as I do now. To compare takes, we can right click and select to front. The takes that overlap here appear in a drop down menu. It's just extended out too far to the right of my screen. But I've just selected my previous take. I'm going to listen to that. Let's listen to our new take now. We'll select that from the drop down menu to front. We can also use the Scrub or Audition tool to solo an event. Simply hold it down over the event that you want to hear. And let's go back to normal record mode. We don't have to set both locators for punching in and out. For example, we can just set the left punch in location if you want to start at a point and then redo until the end of the song or until you press stop. Just position your cursor where you want playback to begin, then press play. Cubase starts recording at the punch in point and keeps recording until I stop the recording manually. Let's control Z that. If you're not using the punch in and out feature and you find that while you're doing a take, Cubase stops recording sooner than you expected or for some reason doesn't start recording, check your transport panel to make sure the punch in and out buttons aren't accidentally enabled and that the cycle button is also disabled. Let's talk about the pre and post roll buttons now. They are located right here. These let you enter a time value for how long Cubase will play back before starting record mode at the punch in location and how long it'll continue playing after dropping out of record mode. This automates the punch in and out action even more. 
After you're set up for punching in and out, activate the pre-roll button and post-roll. We can also enter an amount of pre-roll. I'm set up in bars and beats, so let's say an amount of two bars. Let's do two bars of post-roll also. Make sure you disable the click button on the transport panel, otherwise Cubase will use the metronome's pre-count settings rather than the pre-roll setting that you've established here. If you want Cubase to stop playing automatically after the punch out time, go to File on your PC or Cubase on your Mac and select Preferences. Now choose the Transport branch from the Options tree and check Stop after automatic punch out. Don't forget to click Apply to save your changes. I'm just going to cancel out of this for now. And this concludes our tutorial on punching in and out.